All right, guys. So today we are going to talk about door knocking, but not door knocking like literally the actual physical act of door knocking because that's just too simple for me to do a, a 45 one hour uh, training. Uh, but I want to teach you how to do the research and how to specifically and strategically door knock on people that might be interested in selling. OK, so that's the most important part. The, the activity of go and door knock you know, at a door, that's super simple, which will also go go through it today as well. But uh, I want to focus on the research, which is the most important part. So I'm going to share my screen in a second. Okay, so a couple of things that I want you to have open when you're doing this research, and I will recommend you to do this research the night before or the day before, because if you do the day off, it might, it might take you a very long time to do so, okay? So I'm going to teach you exactly what I do, and what I, what I typically do is that the night before, I prepare all my door knocks, I prepare all the properties that I'm going to go door knock, and in my phone, I would put... Um, uh, all the addresses that I'm going to go door knock in, in the Apple map, if you have a, um, an iPhone. And it's pretty cool because you can pin the, the addresses and you can see which one is closest to you and go on a route. Okay. So, um, sorry. So um, what, what I wanted to say is that at the same time, remember, you're going to do in a specific area. So you're not going to go everywhere and all over Miami. No, you want to do a zip code, right? A zip code maybe close to you. So all the properties you're going to be door knocking is going to be like in a, in a specific area. I just want you to understand that, okay? And the people that we're going to target are specifically expires that expired five years ago, okay? So we can do five, we can do six years ago, but we have enough inventory because if you do it in order and you start January um, of five years ago, that's your inventory for that month then you can do February five years ago. And that's your inventory for that month until you catch up to the month that we are in. So you have a lot of inventory. So I will focus on only one year and you go month by month starting from January. Okay. So let me show you guys the research that I do. Can everybody see my screen? You can unmute yourself or just give me thumbs up. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, we can see it. Awesome. So let me do something here. <clears throat> all right. So this is the MLS and this is what we're going to do all of our research. Okay. And remember, this is going to be recording, which is the first time that I do a recording because I, I tend to do this trainings live and, and it's just doing through Zoom and, and live at the same time. It just doesn't work. So I'm happy that I'm doing a recording this time around because you guys can go back and, and see what I do. Okay, so it's super simple, all right? So remember, we wanna target expires. So the first thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna go here to uh, research, like if you're gonna do a, a regular search. Okay, so from here, we're gonna unclick active, coming soon, and active with contract. The only one we're gonna have clicked is going to be expired listings. You can then go further and target canceled listings um, or uh, temp or, or actually only canceled because withdrawn and temporary of market can still mean that they're on the contact with the realtor. So you might not wanna target those. Um, so only expired. Now let's start on January of five years ago. If I'm not mistaken, January of five years is 2016. So let's go by year. So, okay, so let me show you what I did. So click expired, and then you have a little calendar here. So click that, and you're gonna go down by year. So the two arrows mean by year, and the one arrow means by month. So we were in 221, and now we're gonna go back to six years back. So let me see. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Five years back. Then we're going to pick January. So we're going to go down by month now. So let's go one all the way into January. 
Boom. So now we're in January of 2016, right? And you're going to click, and you're going to select the whole entire month. So you're going to select the number one, and then you're going to go all the way to the 31st. Okay? That's how you select the whole month of January. And you click OK. So now you have your inventory, your expired inventory for the month of January, five years back. Okay? I only focus on single family homes. Uh, you can do apartments, you can do townhomes, but it's easier to go door knock at a single family. Okay. If you do townhomes and, and apartment, you're going to hit a lot of uh, places that have a gate, and that might be a little bit difficult for you to go in. Okay. So single family for the property type and single for the type of property. Okay. Now, all of this you're going to leave empty. You don't pick the bedrooms, bath, price, to sleep, all of that empty. Uh, and let's say you only want to focus on Miami-Dade, right? So click that. And you want to remove short sales and REOs. Let me show you how I added this too, because a lot of people don't know. So if you don't have short sale and REO in your additional fields, all you got to do is click your add or remove. And in here, you can just type, uh, type REO. REO stands for real estate. Um, I think it's real estate. I think. So I think it stands for real estate owned. So it's owned by a bank, right? So REO, you click REO, and then you add it to your additional fields. All right? So let's go back. OK. And now let's pick your zip code, okay? So if you want to pick your zip code, just go here. And let's say I want to do 33185, which is West Kendall. And I want to do, I don't know, 33033, let's say, okay? I have eight matches uh, that, match this, uh, that match this zip codes. You can pick whatever you want, okay? So I will focus on zip code so you can just, just do one area so you're not driving all over Miami. Uh, perfect. Okay. Do you guys have any questions up to this point? You can unmute yourself. Okay. So we're good. All right. So... As you can see, we only have eight properties to look uh, to look at, and that's good. You don't want too much either, all right? Um, I know that Oscar from New Jersey says that he door knocks 100 properties a day. I mean, that's good in New Jersey because the properties might be a little close, but in Miami, that's, that's kind of impossible. I mean, if you door knock 100 properties a day, let me know what you do <laughs> because it might take you the whole entire day. So... Let's, let's look at our results. So, and I'm saying that because it's okay to door knock, you know, maybe two properties, three properties a day. Just be consistent. You know, if you're consistent and you add up three properties a day, you, you'll hit up, you know, 15, 20 properties by the end of the week. And that's enough. You know, you only want to find that one that's going to tell you yes. And they want to list now to get a sold. Okay. So this is your, your, your eight properties. Now, when you click the first one, automatically, I want you to click property history, okay? This is how we're going to see if the property expired and relisted, okay? We don't want to work with the ones that are relisted because some, so, sometimes by looking at the property history, you, uh, the property history, you'll see that it relisted and it sold, okay? If you go door knock at that property, they're going to tell you, I just bought, the, I just bought this property five years ago. No, I'm not going to sell it. Okay, so that's why I tell you, just go directly to the, the, the property history. So let's look at this home. So this home, and, and I want to help you understand what it means, what all of this means. So this home listed on, um, on um, July 30th of 2015, okay? Now, this means active, and this means new. So new, active at 355, okay? So from 355, they decreased the price on November because they couldn't sell it. So they decreased that price to 338. Then on 
uh, December of, uh, of 2015, that same year, it went temporary of market. Okay, so they took it off the market. That's what the T means. And because, and, the, and, and they never took it off temporary of market because it expired on January 30th, uh, 30th of 2016, which is why we get it, because that's the day we picked. Now, it lasted 184 days in the market, and it never sold, according to the MLS. But we're going to do a little bit more research. So let's copy the address, and let's paste the address. And um, I like doing MiamiDate.gov, actually. So if you do Miami-Dade, do Miami-Dade.gov. If not, you can use IMAP or you can use RPR. Now, I want to find out if that listing sold by owner or has a quick, a quick claim deed or, you know, has any, any sales at all since they bought. So let's paste the address. Okay, so now we have this property. It looks really nice. Now let's go down and let's see if they, if they sold. So I see here that the previous owner, uh, uh, the previous owner was Marcus and Marcus sold, uh, no. And Marcus and Nicola sold to these people, to Carrie and whatever this other guy is, okay? Uh, sorry guys, so let's go down. Now I have here, a previous sale of July 27, 2016. Now let's 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 look at that for a second because this is where the homework becomes very important. Okay, so let's go to the MLS. Now, if the property expired on January 30th of 2016. And then we go to property search, and then the, I see that they sold um, on July, which is seven months after or six months after. That means they sold the home. So this is not a good property to go door knock because Marcus was the one that had the listing back in January in this listing here. But Marcus already sold. So you don't want to door knock that home. Okay, this is a great example of a property not to door knock. Okay, so let's go to the next one. And this is what I mean. The research is very important, but it's 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 boring, number one, and it's it's very lengthy. So that's why a properties is good because you're only gonna search eight properties. You know, if you have 20 homes, you have to do this same process for 20 homes. So let's go to property number two. So this property, same thing. It went on the on, on the market for 349, then it decreased for 335, and then it just went expired. It was 184 days in the market, just like the other one. But let's do the same research. Let's copy and paste the address in miamidate.gov. Cool. So let's see, let's go right here to the sale. So I see here that in September 22nd, 2016, there was some type of correction, a quick claim deed on the property. You can see that it wasn't sold because the, the, the price is $100. So like obviously the property did not sell for $100. And then let me look at the owners. So here it says Miguel and Maria. And I see that Maria is still, still the, um, how do you call it? It's, it's still one of the owners. So that means that Maria back in January wanted to sell or there was a, um, yeah, Maria wanted to sell and she did a quick claim deed on September to take Miguel out. Okay. So she took Miguel out, I guess. I don't know. Maybe they got either divorce or he passed away or whatever the situation may be, but she was a previous owner and she took Miguel out of the picture. Okay. This is a good one because that means they never sold. Okay. They never sold that home. So let's go back to our property. All right. And let's look at the listing real quick, just because I want to be nosy. 
So if we look at the property, I, I want to see what the reason is that it didn't sell. Pictures are horrible. I can already tell you. Okay. Let's look at their description. No description. No short sale. Excellent one-story home. Quiet area. I mean, that doesn't seem very attractive. So the description sucks. Then let's keep going down. And then this is Omar, whatever. And he just didn't get the job done. So we're going to go door knock this property and see if they're still interested in selling if the numbers make sense. Now, if they try selling for $335,000 back in uh, January of 2016, I want to know if they gain some type of equity. Now, guys, please keep in mind, you are only going to door knock the people that have $100,000 of equity or more. If they have less than that, move to the next property. Because if they tried selling five years ago for three hundred and thirty-five, and the property just went up in value to three fifty. Let's say just twenty thousand dollars in equity. Why would I sell it now? You know, it's, it's just if you don't have a pitch. It's the same thing. I mean, if it didn't sell back then, why would I try selling it today for the same amount of price uh, or for the same value? And how do we find that out? We use IMAP. Okay, now IMAP is going to give you an estimate that is not an actual comparable but it will give me an estimate of how much the property, the, the property is worth right now in this market. So let's just copy the address again, go to IMAP and paste the address here. And we go. Very nice. Let me see if I can find it by the previous MLS number. Okay, there you go. <clears throat> So let's wait until we load, but IMAP is going to give me an estimate. So let's see. So here you can see that it was listed. Here you can see some information about the previous listing. And this is the value that IMAP is giving me. So that's a really good one. All right. So this one, I really want to go door knock today. Okay. So this property, they try selling it for 335 and now it's worth 487,000 five years later. Okay, so that number may be very attractive to that to that owner. Okay, and now even go further, and it gets me a range here of value. It gets me between four forty nine k and five twenty seven thousand. So that's the one I want, right? So very simple. What comes next is so you just gonna copy this uh, this uh, this estimate that they're giving you, and you're gonna go to something that says here create report. Okay, so you create a report here. Now, don't worry about any of this because obviously you're not going to print out 28 pages or 81. You're going to print out this uh, something that says here property flyer. You click that. And then in the headline, you want to put something like this. Okay, now this is the information you want to leave with the homeowner if they're not interested to sell for any reason. Uh, and just uh, um, also just to leave it with them so they can have it because at the end of the day, if you update your IMAP correctly, you're going to have here your information. So that's the best business card you're going to have. So then um, headline, you put the headline, then obviously kind of just delete this because that doesn't apply. So you want to put, uh, and this you can make it on your own. You can put this as a value, or this is this is just an estimate. I can give you a more accurate value of the home after I see it in person. Okay, so you can write something like that. That will come out in your in your. Um, in your report, but you want to put something like that, right? So now you just go all the way to the end and you put wrong report. Okay. So now my, my report is being made. So we're going to just wait for the report to be done.
right? Any questions, guys? No question. So that means everything is pretty clear. Okay, good. I have a question. How did you get to IMAP? How did I what? How did you get to IMAP? I didn't see what you clicked on. Whoa, you mean RPR? I don't know. How did you, you mean here? Uh-huh. Okay. So before the screen, how did you get here? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going there. Uh, give me one second. <laughs> All right. So um, this is your dashboard for the MLS. Have you ever logged in into your MLS? Yes. Is the okay. IMAP the little blue, blue thing? It, it's not IMAP, honey. It's uh, RPR. Okay. That's okay. what I didn't see. Yeah. So RPR is this here. So when you're in your dashboard, this is your MLS and this is okay. RPR. Okay. So I don't see where you, point. where are you pointing here? Can you see this? Oh, I see it. I see it. Okay. Yeah. So that's RPR. Yeah. So that will take you here. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Hey, no, no problem. You're welcome. Anybody else? Great. So let's review this report for a second. Okay, so check this out. So now you're gonna have a value here in very big letters. You're gonna have how much it tries selling. It says sold here, but it's not It's not true. It's just, this is off market. They tried selling it for 335 and it expired. It has the address, it has the picture, and then it has your description that you put and all your information and, and then everything uh, for the property. This is what you print out and go to the property to door knock, okay? So this is what you print out. <clears throat> Perfect. Any questions about generating the report, guys? I have another question. Yes. Is this process good for working with an investor? Everything that you have done is what I need to, I've been trying to work on to send to him because he wants to, to buy, fix, and flip, but he's looking to make a 30% profit on it. Is this process good? I don't think so because uh -huh. um, it's, you're talking about a fix and flip. That's, uh, I, I, I mean, remember, our, our niche is that they tried selling five years ago and now they've gained more than $100,000 of equity on their home and now they can get more money for their property than they used to before. An investor doesn't want to pay top dollar for the property. An investor is going to want to get at a discount so they can fix it and sell it at market value. Okay. Yeah. So if you come to me and I tried selling five years ago, and now you're telling me that you have an investor that wants to offer me two ninety when I tried selling it for three thirty five um, uh, um, five years ago, I'm gonna tell you to go fly a kite. In my opinion, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. So okay. Uh, that that's that's for um, for flicks and flip uh, for fix and flips. I don't think it'll work. In my opinion. Okay. Okay. Now there's other ways that you can um, find fix and flips, and um, and there's websites for that that we can you know further discuss, um, and also like driving around when you see a property that is is you know uh, very run down, the trees are big, the grass is tall, and they're not really taking care of it, uh, or it has like maybe wood on the windows, and you may want to door knock that property and see you know if they'd be interested in selling it cash. Um, I just have a deal right now on the contract. I tried to go for the listing and um, I listed it under what the property was way under what the property was worth keeping in account that anybody who will buy that property will be will be fixing and flip, uh, buying it and fix and flip. And that's how I promoted the property. So let me actually show you something now that you asked that question. It's, it's not related to what we're doing, but just because you asked, I'll go ahead and show you something else. Uh, okay. So when you do a search in the MLS and you want to find maybe an off uh, a property that's listed in the MLS and you want to see if it's good for an investment, you want to go here to like when you search your, your for your criteria, go all the way down and you're going to have 
an area that says remarks here. And remember, I added this rows. So I went to here to add and remove, and I added the criteria remarks, how I showed you uh, before. So if you want to maybe search only properties that are great for investors, you put asterisk, put investors, and close it out with another asterisk, right? So what this means, Rose, is that if the realtor did a good job and put investors or investor special in the remarks, you're going to see that property. And that okay. property may be at a, at a fair value where it would make sense for your investor to buy and fix and flip. Make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Helpful. You're welcome. So um, there's that. Uh, so right now you have your report, right? So let me actually exit here. Uh, stop share. Okay, so you did your research, right? You have your property. Maybe this is only one, the one we did. But now you have the pro the number one property. You're gonna go door knock. Maybe you have three or four that you're gonna do the same thing, right? And you're gonna go door knock at the property, right? I'm gonna show you exactly, or I'm gonna tell you exactly what you're gonna say. Very simple. Remember, you're not selling anything, so take that out of your mind. You know, a lot of people, when they open the door uh, to their home, they think that you're going to sell them something. So you can start by saying, hey, listen, uh, and you're going to know their name because you're going to have their name um, and, and, um, in the property search. You're going to say their name. So let's say this person, this person's name. I know you guys can't see this, but I'm just, I just want to see the name. So Maria is, is, the, is, is the, the owner's name. So you, so you, you first want to ask, is Maria home? Okay. If you, you don't want to talk to anyone else but Maria. Because Maria is the decision maker of that property. So if the son uh, um, opens the door of a family member or her husband that's not in the deed or whatever, whoever it is, you, you only want to talk with Maria and Redento, which is the other person in the, in the, in the, in the deed. So you're going to ask, hey, is Maria home or Redento home? And they're going to tell you uh, yes or no. If a woman opens the door, answer by saying, Hey, is this Maria? Oh, hello, Maria. Because at that moment, you break the ice a little bit. It seems like, oh, I know you, you know? And she's going to start wondering, where do you know me from? You know what I mean? So when you say, um, when you uh, when they open the door, you say, hey, Maria, don't start sugarcoating anything. Like a lot of people say, oh, hey, how you doing? How's your day today? Don't ask any of that. Because the truth of reality, and I'm sorry to be so blunt, is that you really don't care about how their day is. You, you, you're there for something and it's to find out if they want to sell their property because they couldn't sell it uh, five years ago, okay? So when you when they open the door, hey, Maria, and, 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 you, and you ask the question, hey, look, I, I see that you tried selling your property five years ago and you never sold for some reason. Uh, and at that moment, you, you give them the flyer and, 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 and you tell them, look, this is how much uh, I can sell your property now in this market. Maybe perhaps I can sell it for more um, and uh, I only need your property for 45 days and you can cancel at any time. All I want to do is get your property sold. Do you have five minutes to talk to me? Right. So at that moment, they're going to tell you either yes or no. Some people are going to be very rude. Some people are going to be very nice. So if they give you the time of day and they give you the five minutes, explain to them your, your, your value. Explain to them how you're going to get the property sold. And that you have to practice. So I would get in front of a mirror. I would kind of just ask, uh, like run my script. If, if I'm in front of somebody, practice with a significant other, practice with a family member. So that way you can, you, you can, uh, you know, become an expert in your craft. Um, in those five minutes, you got to say something like, look, I give you a zero cancellation fee on my contract. I only need the property for 45 days. So I don't tie you to a long-term contract. And only if I can, and only if I can make you the money that I promise you, the property gets sold. And then uh, you can ask questions like, if the property gets sold today, how would that change your life? How would that change your plans? Is there still something that you're interested in doing? Because you might run into the problem that, okay, so where do I go? So after you sell the property, where do I go? Talk to them about post occupancy. That if they're interested in up upgrading their home, they can sell high now. Maybe stay in the property after they sell it until they find another one. Talk to them about a sale contingent of purchasing another home. So that way they can put the property in the market, get a contract, put the property pending, and start looking for homes. Once they find a home, then everything starts. 
okay? So you can talk to them about stuff like that because most of them don't know. Actually, the majority of them don't know that this actually exists. They're afraid that, okay, so if I list my property now, if it sells, where am I going? Where do I go? You know, yes, it's going to sell fast, but where do I go? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be homeless. So try to take that, that objection away by explaining to them there are different options. Now, out of that door knock, if they're not interested at that moment or they don't really want to do anything with you at, the, at that moment, try to leave with something. Try to leave with a, a phone number. Try to leave with an email. Try to leave with something because you want to keep following up with that person. And it's very simple. If they tell you that they're not interested, you're going to tell them, okay, great. Look, I just want to be there when you are when you, you decide to eventually sell the home. And I would love to stay in contact with you to see if we can do some business together. Would you? What is the best email for you typically so I can send you some information about myself? So then you grab their email, right? Or you, uh, you get, and after you get their email, it's like, hey, what is the, the best number for you? I want to send you uh, a text with my information, my business card or something like that. Or maybe you don't even take a business card. You'll say like, oh, let me let me send you my business card. What the, uh, what's the best number for you? Boom, you got their number. Okay, so you want to always leave with something because the people that may not be interested now, you want to put them into a follow up and follow up with them at least, you know, every six months, every year to see if they might be interested in selling. Remember that these people, you got them five years ago. The truth of reality is that most agents don't go that far. So these people are not being prospected by anybody, only by you. And you got that information. So that's your lead. Okay, so now let's talk about. But before I get there, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you guys something. So let's talk about when they don't open the door. But are you guys are you guys clear with everything I'm saying? I know I'm going a little fast. Is everything clear? Yes. Yes. Any anyone has a question up to this point? Cool. So um, if they don't open the door, what I'm about to tell you, you guys have probably heard before but it's super simple, okay? You're gonna write in a sticky note, just like this one, you're gonna write, please give me a call, Pablo, and put your phone number, that's it. So for you, Rose, you will put, please give me a call, Rose, and put your phone number. Now, a, yes, you can leave a business card, but this is my business card, right? You can definitely tell that I'm a realtor. So if I leave you this and you're not interested in working with any realtor, you don't even want to give me the time of day, I'm going to throw this in the garbage. But if you if I see a post-it on my front door, the curiosity will kill me and I'm going to call you. I'm going to be like, okay, what, what the hell? You know, some people might also throw it away, of course, because it's like, this is extremely unprofessional. But if you know how to handle it, you can actually... Uh, make it your icebreaker. So when they, when a person calls me on the stick, you know, they'll tell me, oh, but why didn't you leave me a business card? And then I, I follow up by saying, if I would have left the business card, would you have called me? And the answer is typically no. Okay, then I got you. I just wanted to talk to you. And they start laughing. So then then I just make it a little bit funny and, and they understand it's just, yeah, perfect. Of course I have business cards. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not poor. You know, thank God, knock on wood. But um, I, I don't, I don't, uh, but I just want you to call me. I want to find out. I want to ask you questions. I want to qualify you to see if you will be a good lead for me to follow up with. If you never call me, we, ne we never connected. We never did, uh, did, uh, did anything. I can, never, I can never explain to you how you can get your property sold without the fear of staying homeless. You know what I mean? So just leave a stick, you know, and actually I just bought, and I want to, I want to show you. So um, I just bought this sticky note, which looks a little bit uh, weird, but it's actually water resistant. So if I leave it in the, in the in the front door and it gets wet, whatever I write won't 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 delete, and it's like um, a won't erase. You know, the ink won't won't it won't damage it. So it's actually um, and and um, and the glue is extremely strong, so it won't fly away either. Especially in this weather, because if you don't knock at 2 p.m., man, at 2.10, it's probably raining. So you want to make sure that you maybe get yourself one of these. You can find them in Amazon. And they're super cheap. They're like three packs of this for $7. So get something like that and just leave that sticky note. Guys, it definitely works. Okay? 
Now, you have to keep track of these people. So creating yourself a notebook or um, having your CRM or making a spreadsheet because when you when they call you and if you left three, uh, three sticky notes that day, you don't want to know who you're talking to. So you want to pinpoint that address with that person. And if they and you want to ask them, hey, can, can I can I please have the address of your home? They might tell you no. They might get aggressive, be like, you you left me a sticky note. I'm not going to give you the address of my home. Well, then you say, look, sir, I left three sticky notes today. If you're not interested in what I'm telling you, I want to make sure that I cross you off and I don't bother you anymore. So I need at least the first four digits of your home so I can scratch you off here. You don't need to give me the full address, okay? But before you get to ask me any address or anything like that, have a conversation with the person. And you can tell them, look, the reason why I'm calling is because you tried selling your property five years ago and he actually did not sell uh, for some reason. I was just wondering, you know, the market is really high right now. And if you give me your address, I can tell you the exactly value of your home. And maybe it will make sense for you to sell right now if you have a hundred, a hundred and fifty thousand dollars of equity more than what you tried selling five years ago. You know, and then maybe you can spark uh, an interest. And and uh, and out of that call, if everything goes well, try to follow up with an appointment. Hey, can we meet tomorrow at the house? I want to go see it inside. And after I see it inside, I can show you what value it can be sold for. Now, you don't have to make a decision right there and there. But at least it's good for you to know the value of your home. And um, um, and if the numbers make sense at that point, then, may, then only then we can have a conversation about getting the property sold. And that's pretty much it. Okay? So that's the strategy, guys. It's nothing complicated. It's super simple. I mean, the most the, the hardest thing, I, uh, I in my opinion, is doing the research. Because it can get very, very lengthy and very boring real soon. And you might even, you know, do a zip code on, on, on January, let's say. And there might be no properties at all. Like, at all. Okay? So, that can happen. And then you have to go to another, to another, um, to another month or another year. And, uh, and be flexible. I mean, you have right now, you can go back as for five years, six years, eight years, 10 years. You can do three months, uh, three years, two years. You can do really whatever you want. So it's really up to you. So, all right, guys. So just wanted to ask you any questions because uh, this is everything I wanted to tell you guys today. Excellent training. I love it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I yeah, Pablo, sorry, it's Cindy Vallejos. I have a question. So yeah. I know that you, when I, so I was able to pull up the report, um, the one that you said, you know, to pull up with the property report, you said to only hand them like what the first two, three pages? Oh, no. Uh, you have to do the, the report, the property report, which is only one page. Oh, because I, I don't know. For some reason, I ended up with some type of report that gives me 28 pages in total. Right. You did this one, honey. Let me show you. Mira, te voy a enseñar ahora. Look. So, can you see this? Yeah. You did this one. Property report. 28 okay. pages. Okay. Okay. The one you want is this one. Property flyer. No report. Oh, okay. 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 So, Cool. All righty. I, I got it now. Thank awesome, you. Awesome. Awesome. What about uh, anybody else? I want to make sure that I answer all your questions, guys. Uh, one more question. Where do you find the, uh, the value that you put on the, uh, on the main, uh, I guess, the header for the property flyer? Yes. Easy. So when you go here, okay. Can you see this, Paul? Paul, unmute yourself, please. Yes. Yeah, yes. okay. So let's say you go, let me just copy this address again. When you go here to, to home, right? So this is RPR, okay? So RPR, like I showed you guys, it's going to be in your dashboard, which is right here. So when you log into your dashboard, this is the MLS. Let me show you, uh, where are you? Here, MLS, right? And then this is RPR, okay? So you click a PR 
and it's gonna land you here. Let's close here. It's gonna land you here. So all you gotta do is just paste the address that you wanna search or copy and paste the address that you wanna search, click the address and RPR will give you an estimated value. So all I did was put the address and click enter. That's all I did. Okay. So then you go down to the middle and here's the value. Oh, okay, I see. You see, you have a here a, a revenue. Um, I don't know what that what that actually means, but it's a, like a market value. And then you have here an estimate. I will use the estimate because you wanna you wanna entice them. You want them to like open their eyes and be like, oh crap, that's good, you know. So once once they they see between. 449 and 527 when they try selling 335,000 five years ago it's a little attractive i mean you know we're talking about what maybe 150 almost 200 grand of equity in five years i mean you could have made a little and, and remember in five years they're still paying their mortgage so they're going to need a lot more money and the good thing about these people is they already know about the six percent you don't even got to negotiate commission it's just straight, it's, it's straight up. And if you tell them, I only need the contract for 45 days, zero cancellation fee, you can cancel at any time. You know, it is, and, and it's like, we only do one one open house and we'll, and we'll probably have it sold um, over that weekend because now you can say that in this market. I will even say, just give me 30 days. How would your life change if I get this property sold in 20 days, $100,000 more than what you tried selling five years ago? How okay, would now that make you feel? Going- um, I don't know if I might be going a little bit off subject, but where do, where can I find an exact list of the properties that are expired on the MLS? Um, I've been uh, I've been um, licensed for only like ten days. I just got my license, so that's why I wanted to know. I got you. Congrats, brother. By the way. Thank you. Okay, so I'll show you right now. That's a, a very simple question. So when you're searching your MLS, right? You're gonna click a regular search. So when you do the search in the, in the MLS, you have this, the statuses of the properties. So okay. you have active, coming soon, active with contract, pending, rented, temporary of market with John and expired. So you're gonna okay. unclick all this and you're gonna click expire listings. And that's how you get it. Perfect, thank you so much. You got it. About any anybody else? Come on, I know there's so there's at least one more of you that has a question. Um, yeah, yes, I have a question. Yes. Danny, I I can't hear you. Um, Dania, I can't hear you. We're trying to talk. Pablo, I'm sorry. While Dania is trying to connect, um, I do just one more time. Can you to... hear me? Oh, there she is. Oh, wait. So let, let me let me handle Dania first, okay? Uh, Dania, what's up? I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly now. Okay, great. Um, in order to log into uh, the MLS, are you supposed to like create an account? Because I'm new to. I just got my license about a month ago. Yeah, Dania. So you have to have to become part of the of the board, um, and um, it's it's actually a, li- a, a little pricey, uh, in my opinion. But you can mm-hmm. do three three installments, three payments. Um, but it's eight hundred dollars uh, mm-hmm. every year, and you have to pay that every year uh, on June on June. Um, I'll show you right now the website where you, where you can get through there. Give me a second. Uh, I haven't been here in a while, so I'll figure out with you. So you go to, I guess, um, Miami Realtors. Here you go. So you go to Miami Realtors, uh, Miami Realtors.com. I think it is right. And then you land in this page. Oh wait, do I have my, my? Can you see this? Yes. Okay. So um, here, 
that you're gonna click, uh, I think it's membership. Here, this tab where it says membership. Mm -hmm. And I think you put join Miami or just click membership and it'll take you here. New membership application? I think it's here. Yeah, you click that where it says join Miami online new membership member application. Mm -hmm. And let me see. Okay, so before you had to like send a document, now you can do everything online. So I think you can just click here, fill out, fill out our online application. And here you go. So these are the prices. Uh, mm -hmm. I will pick the one in the middle because you get like a little bit more benefits and you do have the right to use realtor, the trademark. And this one you don't. But this one is like for brokers, I think. So you don't need this one. So okay. I will pick the one in the middle and you can do three payments. So your first payment is going to be 99 and the remaining amount is going to be three, uh, three equal payments after that. Okay. So that's, that's how you get it. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, there was someone else, but I don't have your name. Um, that got interrupted. Um, no, it's Cindy again. Um, just one last question. So you you were recommending like when we're doing the flyer per se, and you're trying to pitch and you didn't like, you didn't get to, you know, meet the person or actually you get to meet the person you're handing them the flyer. In the text box, you would recommend just saying like the details of the house or is it, should I stipulate what, how they would benefit out of selling the home during this market? I'm sorry, because I, I think I was, caught up clicking and I didn't really see what you put in the flyer in the text box under the value of so the property. So in the text box under the value, I put, um, uh, what was it that I put? I put something like, this is just an estimated value. I can give you a more accurate value uh, as, as okay. soon as I see the property in person. So they know the value that I'm giving them is just an estimate. You know, okay. you don't want to see yourself in a position where RPR is completely wrong, which sometimes it is. And then okay. you, you see the home and it's a complete disaster and you can't really, really promise the value that, that, that you promised. So remember, at least the way that I list property. So I, I give three different scenarios, right? Okay. So after I see the home, if the property is, um, if, if the property is completely remodeled, then I will go in the high side. If the property is not remodeled, I will go on the low side and I'll explain to them why. Because if it's not remodeled and you list in the high side, uh, you, you might not get the client that you want. But if you list in the low side, uh, it's still a market value without being remodeled, you eventually will find a buyer maybe that will pay you on the high side just because you want to have many offers and you're not be competing with different buyers. So, um, yeah, yeah. so that's what I will put there just to, you know, to, co uh, to cover my tracks and make sure that I don't find myself in a position that I promise a client that I can sell the property for 500,000. And after I see the property, it's not worth more than 450. You know what I mean? Makes sense. But, yeah, yeah. but you can put whatever you want. I mean, you had a great idea. Put there uh, the, a description of the property or put there maybe your, your, like your value proposition, like exactly what you're going to do to get the property sold. Like, you know, okay. 45 days contract, no long commitment, uh, uh, sell it before 30 days, like stuff, like stuff like that you can do. Yeah, like something that would catch their interest. Like at the end of the day, that's what's gonna, the benefits they're gonna see. Okay. Right, um, right. Perfect. Thank you, I appreciate it. You're welcome. And always guys remember that, take a contract with you, a blank contract, because okay. if they're decided, <laughs> if they like what, you, what, what they see, and they for some reason wanna say, well, we don't look, and they wanna be like, yeah, let's do it right now. Then you want to be ready for that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. That would be nice. <laughs> All right. So anyone else? So Pablo, I have a question. Yes. I just plugged in. How do you? I just, um... I just registered for the uh, PRP. Is that it? RPR. So then I've Right. So I activated the account and I just, I don't have an address. So I plugged in my own home address and I find out that one of my neighbors has a foreclosure. Okay. So would that be something that if it says, and I, I did, and I generated the, uh, the report and it says pending offer at 355. 
Does that mean that there is a, it's uh, under contract if it's it pending? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so that one you can't wow. do anything with. Well, okay. I'm yeah. just in shock because I didn't know that his house was under foreclosure. Well, don't feel too bad because typically when a house is in foreclosure, the the bank is the one that assigns the realtor. Uh, know that you can't get a foreclosure. I'm not saying that, but typically, typically the bank is the one that assigns the realtor. Okay. So don't don't, don't feel too bad. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah, and Rose, if you're new, you don't want to start your first sale with a foreclosure, trust me. Trust me, I only have a, a client that he's an investor. And then in the beginning of your training class, it, it sounded like the process that I was looking for. And I said, that's why I said, can I use this process of door knocking with my the process that I'm working on, which is for investors? Yeah, I just, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't think it'll work with this strategy. I think you, okay. uh, you need to kind of find uh, when he, um, you know, the one the, the one in our brokerage that focuses on investments and fix and flips is uh, Miguel Rodriguez. He does pretty much three to four trainings a month on investments. And that's the, the training you really want to attend if you were representing a, an investor. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Fabian, I know you've been uh, muting or muting yourself. Uh, um, you have a question? Fabian, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What's up, bro? So how can you tell if there's certain areas that you can knock or not knock? I know that uh, I got a couple of buddies that do home security and that's something that they come across. So is that a problem for realtors or no? Uh, well, a very simple, bro. Just go in and if they kick you out, just leave. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like, uh, you know, restrain myself because of that. You're going to be, I mean, you can find anything. Yesterday I went, I went door knocking and just so you guys can laugh a little bit. I went door knocking and uh, and I literally see this guy. He's sitting in in his in his garage, and there's a gate, right? So I go like, "Hey, how you doing, sir?" And I start running my my speech, and um, he looks at me, right? And he goes, um, he does this motion, like you know, he does he goes like this. And at that moment, I just I just take it upon myself just to be funny, and then I ask him, "Oh, there's some mosquito flying around, right?" And then uh, he then kind of just stands up and, and looks at me again. And uh, and then I ask, can you hear me? And he says, no. And then I'm like, oh, funny that you answered though. And uh, and then at that moment he goes, get lost, right? Because at that moment, I don't want to work with that person. I just want to make it fun for myself and laugh a little bit. Because if I take it personal, uh, it'll mess up my whole entire day. And I don't want that. I just want to, if you don't want to work with me, perfect. I just move on. So you're going to find people like that. Uh, another story. I had a person that I went to door knock, and this is exactly what she said. It was an old lady. She comes out with th with three dogs, but she has like a a, a a screen door. So she's opened one of the door, and she has an, a, a screen door in, in in front of it, so the dogs can't come out. And I start uh, uh, going with my speech, and she goes like, "Oh, um, I don't speak English." And I'm like, okay, señora, yo le puedo hablar en español. And then she goes like, oh, I speak French. Well, she's speaking English to me. Uh, I speak French. And then literally, I promise you, she starts talking gibberish. She starts going like, oh, you, 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 like telling the doors, uh, the dogs to come in. It's like, rrr, 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 like gibberish. Like, man, I don't speak French, but I know what French sounds like. So that's definitely not French. And she looked Hispanic as hell. I mean, she looked like la tremenda uh, abuela cubana que se pasa en la casa con la bata cocinando. That's what she looks like, right? So I'm like, you know, you're going to find crazy people, but then you're going to find the ones that will tell you, oh, yeah, I do want to sell. Come and see the property. Let's talk. Because that has happened to me too. And those are the best ones because those people are very nice and it's typically a very smooth transaction. 
It happened to me with my previous listing that I sold in Hialeah. It was actually a door knock, and I I sold the property for six hundred and five thousand and double dip. I represented buyer and seller. I got in that deal. Um, I think it was like twenty five grand, and it was just a door knock. I just door knocked. He opened. He was really nice. He opened the door without a shirt. Un cubano. I went in. He showed me the whole house. He was excited to show me the house just because of all the the updates he did. So you're going to find people like that. And for and just for people like that, it's it's worth it. Okay? Cool. Well, guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the training here. I hope this was informational. Um, trust me, guys. You guys want to do this. I always say you have to have five pillars uh, that give you lead, uh, leads every single day. This could be one of them. And, um, and I'm going to be sending this training so they can put it in your YouTube channel so you guys can go back and rewatch it, okay? Beautiful, guys. You'll be safe. Um, and um, I hope you guys have a, a great day. Go kill it today, okay? Bye-bye. Thank you, Pablo. Bye-bye. You got it. Thank, Thank you. Pablo.